The Awakened Harvest Podcast with John White. And welcome to season two of the Awaken Hardest podcast. I am John White, the Awaken Hardest. Very excited to be back. It's been about oh, two months since I've recorded an episode or even put one out. And a lot has changed within that time period. It's now February 2023. And I've done a lot of reflecting in the past two months, primarily after the holidays were over, I use the seasons as a metaphor for transformation that I go through each year. You know, a lot of people do the New Year's resolution. I always feel like I'm trying to fix things within myself. So a New Year's resolution doesn't really make sense because I'm kind of always trying to work on all of my parts that I feel I can improve upon. When I look at the overall transformation that usually takes place, it's kind of like the seasons, you know. Winter at the beginning of the year is really about going within, reflecting, letting go of what's old, letting that die off to bring in the new and spring is like a new beginning. Um, The opening of the cocoon, I guess, in a sense. And summer's more about learning to implement those new parts into my life. And fall is, you know, it's like a harvest of all of the accomplishments, enjoying the new before starting to reflect again when the winter comes back around. I think I'm going to do a podcast next before I get into the new theme of season two about accomplishments and that cyclical um, transformation that takes place every year within me. I think it happens for a lot of us. Maybe we just don't see it. But when you can step back and look at it, you can see the cycle that takes place. It really started like seven years ago for me when my whole journey began of trying to really be myself and do a lot of healing and and all of that. But I wanna, in the next episode, just talk about those accomplishments and kind of show you over the years where I came from to where I'm at now to give you motivation to maybe um, maybe notice what you've accomplished already. Maybe you've done something similar or motivate you to change uh, what you already have going on. That maybe if you're not happy in, in your life, you can find some kind of motivation out of what I've gone through. And at the same time, it is It's therapeutic in a sense for me to kind of talk about this for some reason out loud to to other people. I feel like it's necessary and that there is some way that I am helping other people because of how difficult and gratifying the entire journey has been for me. Reflecting back on last year specifically, it was such a big year for me. I had a lot of accomplishments, uh, self-accomplishments that were very important to me. I guess if there was a theme, the theme was vulnerability for me. You know, I started off by putting a blog out there. And actually before that, I had started really trying to understand social media and Instagram specifically. I'd been on Facebook, but not really somebody who posts much, maybe some pictures of my kids and things about my sports teams in the past, nothing really personal. And when I started to learn about Instagram, it was a little more difficult because I was having to really put myself out there by putting pictures out there and doing stories and things that were very intimidating to me or didn't really even make sense to me. But I had to learn to adjust and learn how to 
live in the world we live in when it comes to social media. And then from there, I, I put a blog out, which is really just a home base for everything that I'm doing now. It's just my website. But I put about four or five blogs on there about my childhood and just to just to kind of give everybody a background on who I am because a lot of what I'm doing is about authenticity and I wanted to give people a little bit of a a background so they could see who I am to know that there's nothing special that we um, that I have that you don't have you know we all come from some kind of different or difficult background And it's about overcoming and learning and growing from those experiences. From the blog came the most difficult part doing this podcast, putting my voice out there for people to be able to hear me and my thoughts and my opinions. So many, so many different difficulties that came from that. And I struggled quite a bit at first but there was a level of excitement and accomplishment that I was doing something that was so difficult. So that balanced it out. And I learned my communication. I learned a lot about my communication through that entire process, the first season of doing the podcast. So a lot of last year was about that vulnerability. And from that, I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about Um, New creative outlets, for one. You know, I started to really get into becoming more into my body and physically taking care of myself. I'm a very introspective person, and I think over the years, uh, at least over these past seven years, it's really been about healing me emotionally and mentally, a lot about my mental health more than anything. And this past year has been the first time that I've actually really started to focus on taking care of my body physically. So I learned a lot about all of the gardening that I have been doing for so many years now. That passion has given me an understanding of plants and herbs primarily. And tea has become a focal point of my health. It has improved my health in so many different ways. And that's kind of became a new creative outlet for me, learning how to implement that into my life. So that's been another big part. And I've really been able to finally kind of relax with my self-image, coming up with a new style and something that represents this new person that I am and being comfortable with it and not being afraid of being different than my peers and people that I've known for a long time. It's odd when you change the way that your outward appearance is towards other people, it can make them uncomfortable. I don't know if uncomfortable is the right word, but it strikes something where people want to kind of fuck with you about, oh, you're trying this something new and you're, look at you, you're wearing this or that. And who's this guy think he is? And at least my guy friends. And that's okay. I, I actually don't really mind anymore because it does mean that I'm being myself and being unique in myself. And I don't expect other people to really understand that because I've struggled to figure out who that person was or is. But the challenge after implementing all of these new things and this new person is finding a way to balance all of that out. And I kind of ran out of gas towards the end of the year there. And it was just too much. The way that my mind is, I'm always interested in the next new thing. I look for motivation in new creative outlets. So things can start to get a little stagnant and I needed to find a way to reinvent this podcast a little bit, something that would change my motivation towards it because there's a lot of work that's put into doing each one of these episodes. That took me some time. Up until about a week or two ago, it hit me what I wanted to do with this podcast going forward. Okay, let me rewind a little bit here. I'm getting ahead of myself. Back in December, during 
the craziness of the holidays and both of my boys, their birthdays fall in December. So it's a bit chaotic. I had this epiphany in a sense of this new direction that I wanted to take my career and how I finally seen a way that all of these things I've been doing over the years from gardening to painting all my creative outlets from the the blog slash website to the podcast social media building that this new idea this project came about and I don't want to get into that because I don't know a lot about exactly how I want to portray that to everybody or how I, I want to present it to everyone. That's going to take a little bit of time. So for the time being, I, I'm just going to focus a little more on the podcast with this project kind of being in the background and intuitively just going with the flow of how, how I'm going to build that. So the podcast, back to that, I realized that over the holidays, it's extremely difficult. The winter months are always extremely difficult when we get into the cold here. I live in Ohio. We deal with a lot of very cold weather. Uh, This winter hasn't been that bad, thankfully. But the holidays can be very difficult for me. I lost my mom in 2018 and also lost my dad in 2020. But I really struggle with their loss, primarily my mom's, uh, between Thanksgiving and Christmas. It's pretty difficult, and I thought it would get easier as time would went by. But it honestly, it doesn't at all, quite frankly. And that's been something in the past... I, I had a girlfriend for a couple of years for a couple of those Christmases, and it was comforting to have someone. Being by myself the past two Christmases, well, I have my boys, but I mean, as far as a, uh, a partner goes, I've been by myself, and that's brought up a lot of new issues for me and difficulties. And with that, I kind of got in a little bit of a dark hole for a little while and fell off of my path. And then to add to that, the overcast skies here in Ohio in January, February, and March, there is very little sun. I mean, we've been kind of lucky this year again. But as far as sunshine goes, I mean, we've probably had, I don't know, since Christmas, maybe five or six sunny days where the sun's just shining and that can be pretty depressing and it's in its own that season affect disorder is definitely a thing for all of us who live in the uh the colder states at least here in, in the u.s or any colder region i guess in the entire world but again it always causes me to it forces me to go within myself being by myself and I have shared parenting with my kid's mom and they're gone. They're not here about half of the week and that changes, but I'm left to really be by myself and through my creativity is typically when I come up with new ideas, but this new me emerges and that new me feeds off of the motivation of whatever I have going on at the time. And my motivation has been fed by this new creative project I have. And now I'm back into the podcast, so I have that going. So the the difficult part is, is trying to find a way to balance all of that within my everyday life. I own a business, a window tinting business that's typically slow this time of year. I have two kids. And I have all these creative outlets and things that my creativity is very important to the balance of my mental health, just as much as time to myself is important to that mental health. Then I have to add in grief. In my life, I've lost a lot of people. And lately... 
over the past four years now, most of that has gone to either my mom or my dad or the combination of both of them. And it's kind of overwhelming because there's so many people that I've lost. I, I don't even feel like I grieve any of any of the other ones anymore. And I guess talking to my therapist, you know, it really doesn't matter how you're grieving or who you're grieving, as long as you're grieving and kind of getting that out. But there's a little bit of a guilt towards, damn, I don't know that I sit and I really grieve about this person and, and missing them. But at the same time, I, it's not like I don't think about them. I just was sitting with a friend last weekend and we were reminisce on a buddy of, the, of ours that we lost last year. That in that moment, I realized, wow, this is, this is like a good grieving because we were laughing about funny moments that we had shared together. So that felt good. But grieving is so much a part of my life. And when I hit that, that like kind of dark hole that I came into there around the holidays and afterwards, I realized that so much of that pain has to be let go. And I have to dedicate more time to releasing that. And it comes out in different ways. So going forward, season two, the theme is going to be grief. So much of my life has been about grief. Going back to the first year I was born, I lost my grandfather, who was everything to my mom and my mom being a single parent for the most part, all of my life being with her, he was the one thing that was always missing. And then it just, it just never ended after that. Death would just not stop in my life. Losing friends and more family and, you know, losing my parents before the age of 40, it's really just been a, a focal point of my life. And I think overall that I've done a pretty good job of dealing with all of that. And I have a lot of unique stories that I would like to share with people. I won't get too specific on, you know, the deaths, but I would like to tell some of these people's stories and how much they meant to me. It'll, it'll be a grieving for me along with showing you how even some of the smaller connections I've had, people that I was just really close with for a couple years and then losing them as opposed to someone I've known my entire life and how that can affect you. I mean, I, there's so many different angles and when it comes to grief, so many different topics to talk about. You know, I've, I've had to grieve relationships that has been extremely difficult in its own. You know, losing my mom, I lost her suddenly, where my dad, I watched him slowly die over numerous years. And especially in the last couple months, two completely different circumstances. And they both were obviously extremely hard, but, but very different. And I can talk about that. I also want to talk about how I personally deal with grief and grieving, how I've failed at that and how I have done very good at it. Maybe both perspectives will give you a new perspective on how you want to go about doing or dealing with your grief because every single person can deal with grief in a completely different way. There's no one way to deal with it. It's just a matter of, unfortunately, working it out and trying to figure out how to go on living life without someone you love so much. From all of these deaths, I have, I think, a unique perspective and a gratitude that most, that a lot of people in this world don't have. I think it's a unique quality that from all of this pain, 
that I get to wear as a badge of honor. It attributes to my confidence in who I am and my strength and my pride. Because as difficult as it is to have to deal with all of these different deaths and, and situations and living without these people, I still continue to go and move forward and appreciate the people that I still have around me. And I think that's special. Maybe hearing some of these stories, you can see some light in, in the darkness that maybe you are in or have been in or maybe in the future will be in. I don't know. I just hope that telling and talking about these things, I know it will be therapeutic for me. I hope it can be for, for others as well. That's the main purpose of this podcast is to tell my stories and perspective and hope that in hopes that it gives you a new perspective and a new view of the world. I'm also going to try to finish off the spirituality series that I started back in October and November of 2022, along with touching on some other topics, not just all grief, because I'm a person living with grief all the time. It doesn't consume my life, but it's a large part of it. And I like to have fun in every way that I can. My creative outlets also at time are very healing for me. And I hope that talking about them will show others the importance of creativity in their lives. I just want to take this episode and kind of throw out an outline of what's to come on the podcast here in season two. I'm excited to be able to really dive into this topic. I also am really hoping to eventually have some of my family members on the podcast and kind of just do a kind of casual conversation about how we deal with grief in my family. We deal with grief in probably a little bit of a different way than others do. We we are a little brash and have a kind of a dark sense of humor. So laughing about them not being around, you know, laughing about stupid shit that my mom used to do helps us through the holidays. And having them on, I think it would bring a level of entertainment to this whole topic. I don't know. We'll have to see how that goes. I'm just now figuring out how to be comfortable in front of this microphone by myself, let alone trying to do a podcast with two people. That's a little bit different. And I definitely hope and intend on doing that in the future. So that's another part of this or another way that I intend on expanding. I really appreciate you listening please on social media like comment follow all of that share the podcast with others that you may think it could benefit if you'd like to learn more about me and my experiences follow at awaken hardest on instagram or visit the website awakenhardest.com.